Welcome to virtualization training for help desk. This is part two and this is the preparation uh, for inst installing the operating system on the server that we have discussed in part one. So if you're new, go to YouTube, type job skill share and here click on this job skill share account and go to playlist and then click on virtualization training playlist. This video is going to be part two. So the first thing you need to do is to install the application called Rufus. Basically, you will click on Rufus like this, and then you see they have portable version in there too. So I'm using portable version. I already did this part, so I downloaded, unzip it, and then open Rufus like this. It's going to open up like this application. So then after that, you need an ISO file. This is the file. This is an installation file. You can use a CD, DVD, but I'm using Rufus because uh, usually these days, DVDs are hard to find and it's easy to find USB so I have a pretty large USB uh, more than 8 GB and 256 GB also works so now basically you are going to ins download this uh, ISO and then you open up this uh, application plug in your USB and then it will automatically either detect it or if not then just make sure it you go ahead and detect that USB now warning anything in that USB it will be formatted you cannot uh, use that data in that USB so it will be formatted then you will need to pick the ISO that you downloaded from the uh, internet the ISO that I'm talking about is basically like uh, the Windows server uh, whichever server you prefer to install so I have Windows 2012 because I like to use that um, it's a licensed version so I don't want to use evaluation for my own labs uh, because I'm going to be using it for other purposes so for you if you want to train yourself and you have the hardware in home then you can download the 2019 or 12 find 12 or find 2016 and download the ISO part to your computer and then use the Rufus and simply once you pick these two then click on start and it will start formatting and then after that it will look like something like this it will look like this your USB will have a set of file right here and that is the file that we're going to be using uh, to uh, you know install our operating system on the server that we talked in part one so now let's go ahead and we did this part the Rufus uh, uh, you know part is done after that I remove my USB and now I'm gonna head out to the server uh, physically and I'm gonna install the Windows 2012 server on it and I will show you before that what needs to be done uh, uh, what needs to be done before installing that operating system so part two continue and we need to beef up our server so you will need to of course invest some money to make sure your server is great for virtualization uh, now our members don't need to do that they can buy it directly from us and they get to access hardware like this uh, from our uh, community portal where we basically give uh, access to VMware servers in our lab so when they buy live training they get uh, this type of access with with it for 30 days so you don't have to like buy all these equipments and everything but let's say you do want to then you have to do something like this because if you look at it this is a 24 core server but the hard drives comes with it is really small so this is only like 125 GB right here so we, we don't we don't want to use this um, yeah right there 125 and it's 10k SAS this is an enterprise grade, grade SAS is 2 TB and very fast so that's all we need right now now in a real world environment people do a lot of rating and stuff like that but for virtualization and lab environment people just turn on they don't want to mess with rating and all that if this fails something goes wrong with it it's a lab environment we replace it it's not that expensive um, so that's one, number one thing we need we need a lot we need a lot of space for virtualization because if you want to give somebody five labs or five virtual machines now imagine that multiply that that space with memory with the CPU CPU will never run out of I mean 24 core, core is a lot of uh, CPU right there that's not gonna be an issue the issue is gonna be space and memory whenever it comes to virtualization okay so we're gonna remove this bracket right here and we're gonna replace it with this one and plug it in here and we're going to put all the memory in the server and then we need to install the operating system and let's go and do that so the 2TB hard disk is installed now we need to put all the memory in there just to make sure which side you need to put the memory on and, and exactly of course 
before this, you need to do your research, right? You, you need to buy a hard drive that com is compatible with this server. Of course, I'm not showing you that. This is something you have to do on Google, depending on what type of hardware you use. And then you need to make sure that memory works with this server because you may buy a 256 GB RAM, spend like $400, $300, and it may not work. Or the CPU, everything, if you're building everything, that is out of this uh, thing. Like I said, that's not going to be your job. For now, I'm just showing you. I'm going to fill all this up and then we're going to put this operating system on that but do uh, you know uh, keep that in mind that you need to do your research before you get everything networking and everything for this hardware okay now when everything is done you need to plug in your server um, and then you need a VGA card, uh, like VGA line to your um, monitor like this and get a keyboard or if you can get a mouse too because later on you're going to need that for operating system once everything is done make sure you cleanly um, uh, close the lid of the server because if it's even if it's a little open then it's gonna start screaming um, so let's go ahead and start it and then uh, do the other part where you need to install now the operating system on this server now before you start make sure you plug in the USB few troubleshooting that I came across is that if you put a memory the wrong way which I just kind of quickly put it there I didn't ex I actually didn't see that there was actually different memories uh, that I had so you have to make sure you look at the manual of the server to put the memory in the right place if you put the memory just like you know blindly of course you're gonna have issues it's gonna stop bleeping and everything it's not gonna come up look at the you know the manual right now you see I put the memory correct way I plugged in the USB and the server just started to open up now for virtualization to work your server needs to be uh, at the level where it can take virtualization this hardware has to have you know the virtual um, uh, the CPU has to have this this uh, feature um, uh, enabled in the BIOS for it to work and you can put more operating systems on top of it now that's the only way it's gonna work if it's too old Make sure that's why I say that you have to do your research that like, can this server do virtualization? If not, then you don't want to buy it. It's too old then. So there you go. We have uh, two CPUs right there. Advanced memory mode is on. 32 GB uh, RAM is installed on this server. We will in future upgrade it. This is just the installation part right now. And uh, the first thing we need to do is to go to the, the BIOS of this server to change to see if we have the virtualization on or not. So we're going to wait for that information right now. So in this server, um, of course, if you're using a Dell or something else and you have to watch the screen, I think Dell is F2 and this I'm going to escape and then move on. And right now it's basically updating our logical drive. This is only one drive on RAID 1. It doesn't matter right now. We just want to get into the system. As you see, we have all these information just came up. System menu F10 is the one that I'm looking for. So if I go to the F10, this is where I want to be right now. So system utility, uh, and let's go to the system utility. And this is what I was talking about that you need to find out in your server where you can find the virtualization uh, you know, feature. So in this one, we're going to find that option right now. So that should be the virtualization option should be in the system option. Uh, that's the first one right there. You will click enter. This, in, this is an HP. Now on other server, maybe you need to do arrow or you have to space or something like that. Make sure you look into that. We're going to look for processor options because we want to see if this has the virtualization. So you see right there, AMDV virtualization. So let's go ahead and see the status. If you click on it, you see it's enabled. So that's a good thing. We don't need to do anything. We need to just restart this now and now boot this server from the USB right here so we can start installing the operating system on the server. So all control delete is going to get it's going to restart again and we're not going to boot the server from the USB. All right, so in this option we're going to click F11 because we want to boot our server from USB. And now it's asking us which option do you want to use so in this we're going to look for the USB the third one
So there you go. So when I pick the third one, it's booting from that USB, you see start blinking up. And that server setup that we did, the ISO, we put it on USB, that file is now kicking in and now we need to install the operating system on it. Now remember again, in this phase, we are installing an operating system first, a normal operating system, and then we will put virtualization on top of it. So it's, it's a full operating system, a Windows operating system server, and then you put virtualization on it. So you see it's a little different story. When the next phase, we are going to install hypervisor operating system full. Uh, that's going to be totally operating system designed for virtualization. So you won't have any GUI. You won't have start menu, stuff like that. It's just going to give you an IP address and you go in there. So that we will discuss in our next part. Here, this is why I say that you need a mouse. So I'm going to get that and then we will continue with the normal installation. And when this finishes up, then we will uh, put the username and password and get in. Okay, the mouse is attached now. As you can see, click next. We're going to install. So I'm looking for Windows 2012 R2 data center and I'm going to click next. I'm going to pick the agreement and click next. And since we're installing a fresh operating system, we're going to pick custom. And you see it picked up my new hard drive right there. If for some reason your hard drive is not showing up here, then you have to do some other things like, you know, you have to go use some other, uh, you know, some, some of, sometime I like to use uh, XP, you know, Windows XP. I actually put that XP in there or Windows, another installation on it. Um, the reason I say Windows XP because it has a really nice formatting tool in there and it works. You will have maybe you will buy a hard drive from a friend or something like that, and they will have multiple partitions in there. So this will not work. Then it will either not work or not show up. So you need to remove, get rid of that whole uh, uh, partition, and you need to format it as NTFS. So when, as soon as you plug in the XP by USB or maybe by CD, usually you're going to get a CD uh, downloaded from internet. I don't know how you're going to get there, but you can use other tools too. Plug that in, turn your machine on just like that, format everything from that hard drive, then do this process again, and then you will see this. And sometimes it even works if you uh, have a partition, you can format it from here and just click new and create a new one, and, and that works as well. So here, if I click next, that's it. So after this, I'm going to uh, come back in part three, because after part three is just a normal operating system of server 2012. Once it's up and running, then we install the Hyper-V virtualization on top of that. And then if it gives you us error that you didn't do something in the virtualization from the boot menu or something like that, we'll find out. Um, I believe I did enable it, but if let's say I forgot to click enter or something like that, then yes, it's going to give me an error. But at least at this point, our server, our hardware is ready because now I can remote into this machine. I can do whatever I want to do as a host provider or as a lab provider or whatever I am, whatever my business is, I have my hardware ready to give virtual features to other people. So while that installation is happening, I thought it would be good to just jump into what we are actually doing in part one. We're using a Hyper-V uh, architecture. So if you go to Microsoft, and I like to use the official documentation from Microsoft, and if we are installing hyper we on the server what type of uh, virtualization we are using so we're using hyper v feature as a type 1 hypervisor based architecture the hypervisor virtualizes processor and memories and provide mechanism for virtualization stack and root partition to manage child partitions virtual machines and exposes services such as io devices to the virtual uh, machines like you know your hard disk memory cpu blah 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 all that stuff so even though uh, we are installing this under the operating system but it is still considered to be a type 1 hypervisor because of its direct interaction and right now on the bottom you see this little image so this is the hypervisor right on the bottom layer and then you see it basically interact directly from the device processors memories and then go above to the other things like you know um io and um basically like virtual machines that you're installing so you can go ahead and read about this type hyper v what type uh, is hyper v virtualization or hyper v information 
trying to find out more about Hyper-V um, this way than when you have an interview then you can talk about two things Hyper-V and VMware and when you start talking about these two terms in your interview nobody's gonna ask basic question at least at least they're gonna know you know about it you're not just straight up coming from a college or somewhere you got the A plus and you have no clue about virtualization uh, so that is where this type of video are going to really really help you and especially with our training as well so then you can go a little bit deep inside and try to get more information if you really want to become the that virtual admin expert if you really want to land those type of jobs they pay pretty good though so yeah and let's move on to the installation of ins uh, the operating system and let's finish this part too now once the installation is over then you just need to restart the server make sure you unplug the USB out of this server I did that and then we'll just restart this machine so just keep in mind and be patient because sometimes in the beginning when the operating system is getting installed it takes a lot of time so right now this is the first screen that we get we're gonna get an admin password and we'll move on with this installation right so now we logged into the operating system for the first time and there you go 2012 is ready and of course I connected my server to the local network so whatever network you have you will be connecting to that make sure you have an Ethernet uh, in, on your server so right now you see it got the connection so as a, as a system administrator or virtual administrator or whoever you are at this point um, you need to first before you leave the server physically you need to do few things because you want to manage this remotely now the rest virtualizations and everything should be remotely done your host is up and running but you want to make sure a few things before you leave the physical uh, you know hardware the first thing you need to do is to right click and go to system and then go to remote settings now if you're using a different server like 2012 or stuff like that it does give you options from here like if you open it local server in a local server you will click on a work group here and then you can click on remote you see there are multiple ways for you to get to the remote stuff so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allow and in the beginning I'm just gonna be because this is my lab environment I'm gonna be doing things to get to it without any problems later on I can secure it if I want to um, so you have to look at your inform like you know your place like where you are and how sensitive this server is gonna be so you wanna make sure maybe if you don't want people to uh, try your server or hack in then maybe you wanna allow this one uh, check this one but hey I don't care about this is a lab I'm probably gonna remove it in a in, in two or three days again so here I'm gonna click apply and OK and then of course I want to change my name uh, for this server and restart it and then I want to install any other features but before that also I want to uh, disable my firewall because I'm gonna be logging in after this from my laptop because I don't want to be sitting here in a cold room right you don't want to be doing that at the same time you, you're an IT person you should be able to get into things remotely so turn off the firewall for now so then we don't have any issues and then the first thing I want to do is to change the name of this machine so I'm gonna give it a name and then I'm gonna restart the server one more time and then I'm gonna try the Hyper-V feature on this server now while this is restarting you may have a question okay so what is cloud now cloud is basically kind of exactly the same thing they will have a hypervisor or uh, they would have something more like uh, similar type of technology even a VMware uh, vSphere you can get it in the cloud or Hyper-V or anything what Microsoft built it but it's just managed by somebody else just like you guys are buying the labs from us directly or you get it from in our live training you're, you're basically kinda like accessing your uh, labs from the cloud through the internet through your browser we have the ability now by doing virtualization putting it to our systems like online systems but it still uses hardware it still uses a virtualized environments like this somewhere so that is what people consider cloud it's nothing different it's just that they made it easier now for even IT people that they don't they don't need to have all of this stuff the virtual stuff either they can just buy it from people and they can use the web browser and get to it but yeah it depends on the business how how they want these things so now we're gonna get into the server so now that our server is ready this is where we decide that hyper V option 
This is where now we decide. This is the operating system that administrator is managing it. And from here on, administrator will give little, little pieces like server 1, server 2, server 3, server 4. He can install it on top of this server and then he can assign it to anybody. It could be whatever business model. So for you guys, let's say I'm, I'm going to give you five labs to one student. So I can do this now. But I don't have to give out the whole server like this. I can give out five labs because depending on what we're teaching, right? So we can change things around. So the, what do we do? We first go to manage, and in here you need to click on add roles and features. So you're going to click next, click next, and then click next again. Now here you see this Hyper-V information. If you click on it, move this on the left and just read about it first because you're learning stuff, right? Hyper-V provides the services that you can create and manage virtual machines, their resources, each virtual machine's virtualized computer system that operates in an isolated uh, execution environment. This allows you to run multiple operating system on top of this server. And then it basically adds more features. So then you click next, just add that and just wait for a second and click next. And then you get these other features too. We're gonna click next and next and then if you have two Ethernet cards, you can use that because maybe if you're creating virtual machines, you may want to use a different network. But in our case, we have only one network. We're going to use that physical network. So here, we don't want to use that. Uh, forget that part. We're going to click Next, Next, and then click Install. And that's it. We're, Hyper-V is getting installed right now on this server. So again, you need to restart the server. This is why I say that don't leave your physical server before if you get an error at this point then you need to fix that so here we are going to restart our server by uh, taking an action the restart is pending you must restart the server to finish the installation so let's go ahead and restart this server by clicking here and then restart so restart here So now the server is restarting. I don't need to be physically here now because I know I have done everything. If it has any issues, I was here physically. Everything is good to go. Uh, and it's going to restart with, this, with the same name. Network will be working. Now I need to go to my laptop. I will be on the same network. And I'm just going to do this from different room, office, whatever, wherever I am. I will just configure this server from there. But it will be easy for you if you have now, if you're using... Uh, Hyper-V and you need to install more operating system it will be easier if you put the USB the ISO inside the USB now ISO remember the first time you install the ISO to put the operating system on this hardware now you need that ISO to install operating systems inside the virtual machines which is that's what's happening right there so that is what we're gonna do right now you see it's restarting again so so this is where it's easier because then you don't need to go to online and download that ISO again right on that machine why would you do that if you already have it here but if you do need let's say operating systems now other operating system Linux Windows 10 uh, any other any anything that can be virtualized that can work with Hyper-V environment then yes of course then you need to go to the web browser in that operating main host operating system download that ISO and then you will be using uh, than that ISO but for me I have Windows 10 and Windows uh, uh, 2019 server on this USB so I'm gonna basically just use that and copy directly to save some time and now I will basically log in from my laptop to configure the rest and show you how the virtual machines are done of course we're gonna do that in part 3 we're not gonna make this video uh, too long but it's I want to just show you that at the end I can log in to this machine from uh, laptop and then we will do part three okay so now I'm on my laptop so of course you need to be in the same network you can use your Wi-Fi LAN connection however you want to do this but you need to make sure that you are in the same network of that server so you can ping it and you can see if it's working so the first command that you want to use to see if it's up and running you can use uh, MGT ping MGT 2012 we this is the name that we gave this server as you can see it's going out there and it is pinging so that this tells me that the server is up and running so next thing I want to remote in in remote this is we're local right now right I'm in the same office and I want to 
basically log into that server now because I, that room is cold I want to get away from that so I'm going to remote in by using RDP remote desktop but to get into that server remember you're not on domain environment you have to use a local uh, server name MGT 2012 v slash administrator if it was a domain then you will be using the domain net bios like jss7 whatever head hq slash whatever that is and then you will be using your password and then you will be basically logging into that server right now it's looking for that information say yes and that's it we are done almost here so now we are inside that server and that's a great thing everything is working the server manager will come up uh, what I need to look for is the Hyper-V uh, option so you can do it uh, by by searching it here on the server Actually, let me move my on the server I think you guys cannot see my screen but on the top right side there's a Hyper-V option but on if you look at the apps there's a new feature that just got installed so if I click on that you can see I have my hypervisor uh, sorry hypervisor hyper-v manager running now so this is the server right here so now if I want to install virtual machines I have the ability to do that if I right click here you can see I can click and create a virtual machine virtual hard disk I can do a lot of different things uh, in this right now because I have the ability to do that right but your ability is coming from where from the main host if I went to the system I have 32 GB RAM and these are the processors that I can use and that's it the, and the space that I have in this main host which is 1 TB right here so uh, if I open this up here this is the space that I can use right um, if I want to and this is where I say that it's going to be easier for you to copy uh, put ISO already in the USB so it's on the same server so now I can basically come here and install the ISO directly from here without worrying to download it again but of course if you need more ISOs you need to download them you can do it so in part three we're going to install oh, uh, the virtual machine how to take a backup how to take a snapshot and play around with virtual machines and usually this is what you do as a, as a help desk you are given access to this level right or maybe a little lower level than this or maybe just a virtual machine level but sometimes if you're working for a company then they give you access to get into the machines a server administrator will call you can you restart can you check if it's shut down can you do this can you change the RAM and they will guide you or maybe you're working with somebody remotely so this is what you do you don't do the, the part that you just saw installing the ser the hardware server everything don't nobody expect that from a help desk but by looking at it now at least you have a clear idea of wh how virtualization in a in a hyper v environment uh, happened before if you go to the company and they're using hyper v or if you're using a practice lab you're a premium member you, you know that you have ability to work on hyper v uh, directly in our labs so when if you're a premium member you go to the practice labs some of these labs are designed for hyper v as well so you can get into it but they're not going to give you that hardware type of training right that's something that we do uh, and of course even we don't just show you hardware like hey this is how you do it we did this part because then now when we do live training we're going to basically show this to our members that this is how things happened before you got into hyper v so it makes pretty clear sense to people to understand things now thank you so much for watching this i'll see you in part three